25th Psalm begins this way. Praise waits for you, O God, in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. O you who hear prayer, to you all will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you atone for our transgressions. You answer us with awesome deeds of righteousness, O God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. Those living far away fear your wonders. Where morning dawns and evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. We're going to begin, thanks to Vicki and Sanjay for the music today, Up From the Grave He Arose. The words for all of our songs are on the center insert. So if you just pull the center insert out, you'll have the words. The order of service is on the outer uh, page. Ted has the bullets. Let's pray. <laughs> Gracious God, we give you thanks that we are able to gather together on this morning, conscious that sometimes there's much snow and ice. We are thankful that there is none. Conscious that sometimes there is rain and water. We are thankful that there is not. Conscious that we have friends, old and new, with whom to greet, we give you thanks. But most of all, we give you thanks that the reason for our gathering is that after Friday's solemn remembrance of the death of our Savior, the first day of the week follows. We are grateful, O God, that on that day, the first disciples discovered something very different from what many of them expected. Instead of body, they 
found an empty tomb. Before the day was out, and in some cases before the week was out, they encountered Jesus fully alive, as he promised, as was prophesied. We are so thankful, O oh God, that the resurrection of Jesus is the foundation on which we live here and forever. We confess, O oh God, that it is easy for us in the routine of our lives to sink into habits, practices that are less than life-giving. We are conscious and we confess that sometimes we are overcome by despair, discouragement, sink into the pit of depression. But we know, O oh God, that you came to lift us up as surely as you lifted Jesus from the darkness of the grave, you lift the darkness from our souls, cause us to see the light of life and to rejoice in your mercy and your love. Accept our worship this morning mm -hmm. And accept our worship this day and this week and this remaining days of our lives here on earth. We might give you praise and rejoice in the God of our salvation. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now the first reading this morning is from Ezekiel chapter 37 may think this is an odd reading, but I encourage you to hear these words. You'll come back to them in a little while. The hand of the Lord was upon me. He brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. And it was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry. And he asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Next song is 10,000 Reasons. Okay. Yes. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Bless his holy name. Sing like me. Rich in love and your soul to anger, 
Our next song is At the Dawning of Salvation. The tune is to Come Thou Fount. Yeah. So if no Come Thou Fount, then please join us as we, as we sing. Then they came to 
together in the gallery, he said to them, the son of man is going to be betrayed to the hand of men. They will kill him, and on the third day, he will be rise to die. And the disabled were filled with grief. The next song is Morning Has Broken. song is Were You There? Oh. 
themselves, he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. It's easy perhaps for us, 2,000 years and more after the resurrection, to gather as we are on this Easter morning and to greet one another the Lord is risen. He is risen, he is risen, indeed. risen indeed. Hallelujah. We, we are able to do that because we know that Christ is risen. But thinking back to that first Sunday after that first Friday, when Jesus was crucified, the signs as we have them recorded in the scriptures suggest that there was not an overwhelming expectation that Jesus was going to rise. And in fact, when the women went to the burial place, stone sepulcher in which Jesus' body had been laid, they did not expect to find him alive. They expected to find his body, and they were prepared to anoint him. The uppermost question in their minds as they wandered their way to the tomb was, who is going to roll the stone away so that we can come in and do our anointing? They knew that a huge stone had been put in front of the tomb to seal it. The scripture tells us elsewhere that there was to be a guard posted and they were to make the tomb as secure as they possibly could because the Roman authorities were wondering not about the resurrection but about somehow Jesus escaping by means of having group of disciples come and steal his body away. None of that suggests that there was an overwhelming expectation of resurrection. And yet, the scripture tells us that when the women arrived, they found the stone had already been rolled away. When they entered, verse 3 of our passage, they did not find the body. And they began to wonder, what has happened? What's going on? And then all of a sudden, they're greeted with bright light. Two men in 
clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. The response of the women was to fall on their faces, frightened. Only then do the messengers of God break in upon the consciousness of the women with the question, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. And remember, he told you, while you were still there, while he was still there with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Now, at this point, I simply want to point out that there were precedence in the experience collectively of the disciples of the community of people who had followed Jesus while he was on earth. There were precedents in their experience about the ways in which the Spirit of God moved mysteriously. And perhaps the most significant one is the one that we read about in the Transfiguration, where Peter and a couple of the others are with Jesus on the mountain, he having led them up. And before their very eyes, he was transfigured. He became as bright as the light. And Peter's response was, we've got to keep this moment. We've got to keep things the way they are. Moses and Elijah appeared. Jesus was there, transfigured. And Peter blurts out, Lord, three booths. Let's, let's make three shelters and contain retain what we've got here. Of course, they looked up and it was all gone. Now, I have no doubt that even before that, members of the Hebrew community knew full well the prophecy that we began with from Ezekiel about the dry bones in the valley coming to life. And not just coming to life, but coming to life through human agency. For you notice, perhaps, that the question that was asked by God was, can these bones live? And the answer was, Lord, only you know. Then the amazing thing is that God says to his servant, you tell the bones to live. You prophesy to these bones and say to them, hear the word of the Lord. I will make breath enter you. You will come to life. I will attach tendons and flesh and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life, and you will know that I am the Lord. Now I like to think that there's a connection between the way God providentially manages the resurrection of Jesus, and the way God, through Ezekiel, called forth the vision the dry bones of life. And I think when we look closely, 
what the text doesn't say, but hints at. In the last verse in that passage from Luke, where Peter went away wondering to himself what had happened. Remember, he hasn't seen the risen Lord yet. But remember, it is Peter who, by the presence of the Spirit of God, is going to be used to bring to life thousands of people. Dead in trespasses and sins, but made alive because they came to recognize Jesus, the risen Lord, as Savior, as Redeemer. Entitled our reflection this morning, An Empty Tomb, Question Mark. That empty tomb led Peter to wonder. Eventually, he encountered the risen Jesus. But I want to plant the seed thought this morning that when in our mind's eye we look at that empty tomb, Remember, the disciples were thinking it was full. They were expecting to find the body of Jesus, but they didn't. And they wondered why. They wondered what had happened. They wondered how this could be. By the grace of God, I believe the Spirit of God would say to you and to me, Start wondering. Start wondering what the Spirit of God will do. And as surely as the disciples did not understand the transformation, the transfiguration, and as surely as Ezekiel did not understand he could prophesy to dead bones and have them come to life. So God would have us wonder how the resurrection of Jesus transforms everything. Let us pray. Gracious God, the Son has risen. The Son of God has risen. And though we wonder how, sometimes wonder why, the clues are there in your word for us to know that here is the breath of life which cannot be contained by death and will rise in us and through us as the witness of your people, your church, to Jesus, who is risen from the dead. We thank you this day, O God, that the tomb was found empty because our Lord lived. May we proclaim the resurrection until we see Jesus face to face. Amen. Amen. Now, our closing praise is because he lives. But before we sing that, I simply want to remind everybody that if your fingers or your toes are a little cold, there's supposed to be some hot beverages back in the fellowship hall. And if you need a little refreshment, I'm told that somebody's been busy making pancakes. 
and I think you could probably find some if you wander back to Ken Chesterton Drive. with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be all glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now and throughout all ages and forevermore. Amen. 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 